Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to set up and configure your first ASP.NET project. My name is Shad Sluter and I teach programming at Grand Canyon University. In this video I'm going to show you how to use Visual Studio and start your first project and look at some of the details on what the options are. So you can see that I have a Windows installation here and I have installed Visual Studio. So I'm using Visual Studio 2019. So let's get a project started and see what the options are. So I'm going to choose the button that says create a new project. And when I start it, I'm going to search for something called ASP.NET and look at all of the options. What am I going to pick and what's going to work best? So let me just go through some of the things that are here and maybe what you want to choose and maybe what you don't. So I'm not going to choose this first one called the Core Web Application. ASP.NET Core is for multi-platform uh, in interactions, so you can run this on a uh, different operating system than Windows. What I am choosing though is the second one called uh, Web Application.NET Framework. However, this also is a problem because if you notice the language, it says this is for Visual Basic. Now, there's nothing wrong with Visual Basic, but the class that I'm going to be teaching here is in C Sharp. So I'm looking for this one called ASP.NET Web Application, and it has C Sharp listed here. So let's go ahead and click Next. Now, what's the name of my application? So I'm going to call this thing my first app. Now, you notice the location of where the project will be saved. So by default, it puts it in the Users and your Username, Source, and Repos folder. So if we wanted to find that, we could go and browse. So I'm going to look at my hard drive here, and I'm looking at the C drive, and you can see the users folder, and then we have my name, and then we have something called source, and then finally repos. So let's see what's in there. You can see all of the different things that I've already created, and they're in this folder. So if you want to find your application and where it was compiled, this is where you go. All right, so that's the source. That's the place where it's going to be placed. Uh, I'm going to check this to say put it in the same directory. And then you can choose the .NET framework and the version you want. So it's probably wise just to pick the most modern one that's available. And so at this time, it's 472. Let's go ahead and create it. Now you're not done with your options. What can you do that will make this uh, application run? So I recommend that if you're starting a project, you can choose the MVC format. This will give you some sample pages to look at. You'll see what a controller is, what the views are, and it'll help you in learning just by examining what's already there. Now, also the authentication here. So no authentication is set, which means there's, there's going to be no database in the background. So let's choose what I have here. I have uh, MVC and no authentication. Let's go ahead and click the Create button. Okay, so the project is up and running. Let's examine some of the things that you'll find in an ASP.NET application. So you get this introduction that says, welcome to ASP.NET. But let's look in the folders here. This is probably where you're going to be spending most of your time as a programmer. So if you don't see Solution Explorer, you can probably show that under the View menu, I believe. So View and Solution Explorer should be in here somewhere. It's the first item. So it's probably open already. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what's in here. So the folders that you're going to be most interested in are things like the views. So what is a view? Well, a view is a page. So if you were to think about what a HTML page looks like, this is what this is. So if I were to open up about, you can see some HTML code. You can also see some other things with an at symbol. Let's go look at the contact page. You can see that there's some HTML code there, as well as the index, which is the default page to start with. So since we have those three already on the uh, app, we can go see what it looks like. I'm going to choose the button that says IIS Express. So when I click this, it'll launch a web browser. Now there's a web server built into Windows, and so it's you don't have to install some kind of an Apache server or anything when you're working with Visual Studio on Windows it will automatically launch this IIS, which is Microsoft's web server. You can see the page that's coming up is localhost, and it has a port number, slash home slash index, which is one of these views that I just showed you a minute ago. 
Now, my program just launched, and you can see we have a page. Let's go expand this. And at the top, we have home, which is what we're looking at, about, which is exactly what we saw in a minute ago, and contact. And so those three are the views that we just looked at in the Project Explorer. Let's close those and make some changes. So when I close the web browser, the program stops. So let's go into the About page. Let's see, this is to provide more details. All right, so I'm going to add some details. It looks like it would be pretty safe if I just changed some of the HTML code and added a new line. Let's go ahead and run the program and see what comes up now. So you can see when I launch the program, it automatically shows the view that I was currently editing. So I'm on the About page. This is called a route, home slash about. And you can see I've added some new text and it shows up here on the website. The other, the other pages are still available. Now there are two other parts to the website that you should probably be aware of right now. Let's go into App Start and see what's in there. There's an important file called Route Config. And so the route config is the program that will capture the URL and direct it to the proper page. So you can see that the URL is set in this format. It's going to look for something called a controller and then an action. So for instance, home slash about. So it's pointing to something called a controller named home. Let's go look in the folder called controllers. And there is a folder called home controller. And you can see that uh, there are different things called action results, and we are going to get into these in the next few tutorials. I'd like to show you one more thing, and it's the debugger. So for instance, we have this thing called a, a variable called a view bag. Let's go ahead and put a stopping point right here. So I'm going to click in the margin. And when I run the program, this will stop, and it'll allow me to explore the values of these variables. So we are on uh, the debug mode, and I'm going to choose Go again. So the website launches, and we are at the index page. So I click on Home, and nothing changes. I click on Contact. The Contact page comes up. But now when I click the About button, the program stops, and we are at the code area where we can explore. This is what a debugger will do. And you can see that it is highlighting the place that I'm at. So let's go down and check out what some of these things are. We have something called a view bag. I'm going to step over this with the step over button. And now when I go look for view bag in the list of variables or hover here, I can see that there is a bunch of properties. So all of these variables that you work with are going to be explorable. So in this case, a view bag obviously is showing something with a property called message and its value is listed here. No surprise, since it was defined right on this line. But if you're having trouble figuring out where the uh, variables are going wrong when your program's running, the debugger is the way to go. So I'm going to stop the code, and then I'm going to remove this uh, debugger stop sign. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to work with a controller and create new views that are your own custom work.